Hello! Today we're going to be looking at some of the basic things that can be done with emissivity in Fusion 360. For our first example, we've got, well, a light bulb. In order to make an emissive, all you've got to do is go to Appearance, Miscellaneous, Emissive, and whatever variety of output that you'd like. You can have 1500 lumens, 800 lumens, or anything in between. For our purposes, to, and to keep things simple generally, I'm going to go with a 20 lumen bulb. But there you go, our light bulb is now emissive. And just to prove it to you, I'll go to an assembly, which includes the light bulb, and do a nice quick render of it in ideal lighting conditions. And maybe a bit overexposed there, but as you can see in our environment, we have a nice inverse square effect going on and well, emissivity in Fusion 360. And under the right conditions, really, you can get some pretty decent results. Here's something that I prepared in the future. However, there's much more that can be done with the emissive library in Fusion 360. This, for example, is an emissive OLED display, which has an imported picture taken to act as the faceplate for a sort of simulated old-style radio. But let's say that I didn't want this to be a picture of a radio display. In fact, let's say that I didn't even want this to be a picture of an OLED display at all. Let's say I wanted to make this an LED display of a banana. How would I go about doing that? Well, as with most of what we're going to be doing today, it all has to do with appearance. However, instead of being in the miscellaneous emissives, we're going to go into the other emissives. I don't know why they separated them like this, but they did. So, um, yep, looks like there is no LED display, so we're going to go with an LCD technology. Stick that bad boy on there, and oh no, we've got Windows Vista. No one likes Windows Vista, so just go to Edit, uh, Advanced, and change out the image. We're also going to want to increase the brightness a lot for our specific application, but we can worry about that in a moment. So we go to edit image and I have a banana picture that is prepared already. Click apply and there you go. However, going back to edit image, you'll notice that this banana isn't really well square on the picture. So all we have to do to achieve that is simply create an offset. We can also do some scaling, which is going to be necessary because this is only a 2-inch puck. Alright, with that fixed, all we've got to do is move it down a bit, and there you go. An emissive banana. Now that our banana is emissive, if we, of course, save this and then go over to our scene, you'll notice that there's something a little bit, uh, well, wrong about the ban banana. And that's that there is basically no emissivity. Not a very bright banana, if I do say so myself. So let's go over and to the appearance and give this banana a bit more of a light output. Let's take it to 200,000. I know it looks like it's drowning out the banana, and it is, almost certainly. But let's go back to the scene and see what it does. Frankly, I think you're going to have to agree that that is a pretty bright banana. So there's one other application for emissivity in the Fusion 360. Obviously, you're probably not going to usually have a picture of a banana, but if you want to create a tablet display that seems like it's emitting because in the confines of Fusion 360 it is, there is another possible use for the technology. Finally, we're going to talk about emissivity in the context of vacuum tubes. Now, this is a situation in which you're only going to have one or several, depending on the tube, of course, the point of emissivity that is going to have to reflect through the individual components of your part out into the virtual lens of Fusion 360. In personal experience, because of the suboptimal light output achieved by Fusion 360 materials, you're going to need to crank up the emissivity quite a bit in this case. Uh, and of course, tubes usually have a nice, well, tube glow. And the tube glow is a is a bit of an orange. So in order to get that appearance, all we're going to need to do is go over to appearance and make this part a display. Now, you could make it a light bulb, but I want to make it a display, so calm down. So once again, you go to other emissive, and for no particular reason, this is going to be an OLED display. So now that we have an OLED display defined, we're going to go to edit, and I mean, we could give it a color right here and just be done with it, frankly. And now that we have a color, you can go to edit and, of course, crank up that luminance. Once again, even though it's completely unnecessary, I'm going to bring it up to 200,000. And if we go over to render and press the scary in canvas render button, we can see that my computer is dying. We can see that 200,000 is not nearly enough for this application. So let's go back to design and well, add some more zeros. 
Never mind, it won't let us add any more zeros, so let's make it 800,000. Now that it's completely ridiculous, of course, a great way to end the video so that the viewer will continue watching, we can go over to our render and render this magnificent thing. I'm <laughs> just kidding, that would take an incredibly long time because uh, there's quite a bit going on here. So let's go to a picture from before. Or rather, something I prepared earlier. Wow, look what you can do with emissivity in Fusion 360.